Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen and welcome to another weekly meal prep. So today is a rainy dreary day, which is always a call for me to get in the kitchen and do something. If I'm not going anywhere, I'm not gonna be able to be outside, we might as well spend some time in the kitchen. So I am going to kick things off with a really good fruit salad. My sister-in-law got me started on this and the girls have been asking for some fresh fruit. So we're gonna cut one up and make it look like candy. I think whenever you've got a lot of colors going on, it just makes your kids really attracted to that. And I'm gonna finish my morning coffee and then we're gonna dive right into Monday's meal and we'll go through the week and get as much prepped as possible so that it saves us time through the rest of the week. Pre-cutting up fresh fruit is something I used to have in my rhythm, in my routine, and somehow I really got away from it. Maybe it's because I had really been doing a lot of once a month grocery shopping, or I'm not sure why, I just didn't have my fruit prepared in the refrigerator as much as I used to. And so doing this really inspired me throughout the summer to make sure that I have fruit salads or fruit cut up in the refrigerator for my kids to grab and go. It's just such a healthy, easy snack for them. And I know they really enjoy it. So one of the keys to making this fruit salad and making it really delicious and work well is making sure that everything is cut around the same size. So I kind of went with the size of like a blueberry or a blackberry with my cutting and dicing of the pineapple and then also the strawberries. I just made sure that everything was cut around the same size and it's always fun to kind of layer everything into a big bowl and see it all in its individual colors and then you get to stir it together at the end and it's just fun. Let's make cooking fun. Who says you can't have a little bit of fun and creativity when it comes to how you're preparing your meals? The grapes for the salad were huge and I actually asked my daughters to come in and to tell me if they wanted me to cut these grapes into pieces and they said, no mom, leave the grapes huge. That'll be fun in it to eat. So I just left them the size that they were and then I went ahead and cut up the kiwi and I don't know if you all know this, but you can actually use a spoon to peel a kiwi and if the kiwi is ripe, it's really easy to do. If it's not quite as ripe as you might want it to be, um, it's a little bit more tough. And these were not quite as ripe as I really wanted them, but it's just the way it is. It, they were good enough, good enough to go with the salad. So now that you have all of your fruits cut up and prepared, you're gonna go ahead and drizzle some local honey over the whole works. And I also splashed in a little bit of lemon juice as well. You can use lime juice too if you want to. And then you're gonna just stir it all together. And it's just so yummy. It's even great for the allergies, if you're going through like spring season like we are right now, having that raw honey, the local raw honey, helps your system just combat those allergies. So anytime I can put local raw honey into a recipe, I am on it. Alright, for Monday we're going to do some grilled garlic parmesan chicken skewers. I'm really excited to assemble those and then I'm going to go ahead and get our smoker started. We have one out in my husband's shop and so I'll just put everything on there but I'm going to prep the chicken first because I'm also going to be making an antipasto salad and we're going to do baked potatoes on the night that we eat this. So 
I'm just going to kind of prepare the chicken and then get the salad going while the chicken is grilling. So to prep this chicken, you're just going to make a dry rub first and it has some smoked paprika, some onion powder and garlic powder. And I'm just mixing all of that together in the bottom of a bowl before I add the chicken. That way you don't have one piece of chicken with one uh, seasoning and then one piece of chicken with paprika and yeah you just want to make sure it's all stirred together in the bottom of the bowl before you add the chicken in and this really makes this chicken have so much depth and flavor whenever you're dry rubbing it before you grill it and add the butter mixture that we'll be making next. So I used chicken tenders for this. I just feel like they're so, I mean, obviously that's what they're called is chicken tenders, but they're just so tender on a skewer and they're really easy to cut up because of their size. You just kind of chop through them and you're able to have your pieces that you need to put on to your chicken skewers. And some people soak their skewers in water before they put the chicken on them. I may have done that once or twice in the past, but I haven't found a huge difference in the outcome of my product at the end by soaking them. So I just leave them the way they come and I put the chicken on in that form. Another way to coat the chicken would be to put it into a Ziploc bag and you could shake it up and just put the dry rub on it that way. So we're going to be making a garlic butter mixture. As you saw, I used some of my garlic cubes that I've made with you all in the past that I love to keep in my freezer. I literally use them all the time. Like every day I have a use for my pre-minced garlic in the freezer. Then you're gonna add that to some butter. You're gonna add some red pepper flakes, a little bit of hot sauce and some freshly grated Parmesan. And this is really gonna make your sauce kind of that you're going to be putting on the chicken. Now, once I made this, I realized that I kind of wish I would have grilled the chicken completely. And then whenever it was done, put this butter sauce on because it can actually make your grill flame up a bit because the butter is very flammable. So that would be my little tip and the next time I make this, that's definitely how I'm gonna do it, is I'm going to just grill the chicken with the seasoning on it and then whenever it comes off of the grill, load it up with that butter parmesan sauce and either put it in the oven for a little bit longer just to melt the parm or just cover it with tin foil and let it, the heat from the chicken melt it. And then as you saw, I also added some parsley, which I'm really excited about. I just planted some of that and I'm hoping to have some of my own fresh parsley here after a while. And then I just got these all on the skewers and then onto the smoker. And these did not take long at all. I actually really like to temperature check chicken whenever I'm grilling it because I have the hardest time making sure that it's actually done. And then sometimes I like second guess myself and it ends up super dry. So you wanna take it off as soon as it hits the temperature it needs to be cooked. And then you're gonna have great juicy chicken and not overcooked chicken. Okay, so to go along with the chicken skewers on Monday, we are going to have some antipasto salad. And I think I'm saying that right, but I just always think of anti-pasta <laughs> because it's similar to a pasta salad, but there is no pasta in it. And I love, love, love this. My daughter Kylia and I both just really ate at this this week. Even as leftovers, it was a great side for lunches. Just absolutely delicious. 
this. So I'm just putting some fresh mozzarella balls in there and they were really big so I cut them in half to spread it throughout the salad a bit more. And then I got some hard salami and just chopped it up into bite-sized pieces. There's a lot of different options you could use in this and you can also take things out if you don't like them. Things like olives. I'll be putting some olives in this. If you are someone that doesn't really like olives very much, you could totally omit them and even add something else in. And then I also am going to be cutting up some prosciutto and that is really delicious in this. I feel like it just adds a whole other flavor combination in to the protein of this. And that's another thing I've been trying to make sure I'm really getting my protein every day. And so this was a great little protein side dish as well. And I just made sure everything was around the same size, kind of like with the fruit salad, just making sure that it's easy to eat that way. The other thing I'm gonna be adding into this is some artichoke and you can get artichoke that's marinated. I just got a very like basic type of artichoke to put into this, the canned artichoke. Just drained it off before I put it in. Then I'm gonna add in some olives and some little grape tomatoes. I did cut those in half just because I felt like they were a little bit big. And then I'm also adding in some yellow banana peppers that are pickled. You could get spicy ones. I this time just went with the mild, the ones that aren't very spicy. And you could also get the peppercini, I think that's how you say it, the ones that are like the whole yellow pepper um, to put into this as well. So once you have all of it together, then you're gonna put an oil across it. You can use olive oil, but I just had avocado oil on hand. So I drizzled it all with that. And then another thing that you're gonna add in is some vinegar. Again, you could do balsamic. I had some rice vinegar just sitting on the counter from something else we were making and I grabbed that and it was really delicious in this. Some salt, some pepper, and another option that some like to add into it is fresh basil leaves. That is something I do not care for. Um, I just, it's too much basil for me. I enjoy it on pizza but not in something like this. So I just left it as is. <laughs> so for Tuesday, we are going to do some corn salsa tacos. And I just got out my meat for that and then we're gonna whip up some corn salsa. And the beauty of this is that this is going to have like a day or two to sit in my refrigerator and really let those flavors combine. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mix in my frozen corn, still frozen, and then I'm gonna cut up a red bell pepper. We have some cilantro, some lime, some lemon. It's very, very basic and very, very simple, but gives you all of those great fresh flavors. And I wanna really try this recipe whenever corn is in season, this summer here in central Pennsylvania. I just think that having some fresh corn off the cob for this recipe could be absolutely incredible or even some grilled corn could add a whole other flavor. So that mm, just sounds so delicious. And then you can add as much jalapeno as you want to depending on how spicy you wanna make it. I just took one jalapeno and I cut it up pretty small and I mixed it through the entire thing just to get like a, I don't know, medium heat level and not too spicy for my kiddos. I feel like in a fresh dish like this, you gotta use the fresh lemon juice and the fresh lime juice. Yes, I have the bottled kind in my refrigerator and I actually even home canned some of my own lemon juice, but nothing beats just fresh citrus in a salad or in a salsa like this one. And I don't know if I mentioned it already, but as usual, the recipes will be linked in the description box below. So I will just be making up some corn tortillas because we do eat mostly gluten-free in our house. And then we will mix the taco meat with the corn salsa and probably some sour cream, maybe some fresh tomato and just make a nice little taco bar to load everything up. And of course, on my taco meat, I am using my homemade 
taco seasoning super super simple i've shared that a lot of times with you all and then i always add just a little bit of water in as well to help that seasoning stick to the meat For Wednesday, we're gonna be making a ground beef Mongolian noodles and broccoli. This is such a clever way to use ground beef. We actually get a large portion of beef. This last time we actually split a whole beef with some friends and family of ours. And so I'm always looking for creative ways to use beef because we've got good local grass-fed beef at our fingertips all the time so i am using a brown rice pasta it's a thai noodle um for this dish because it is a bit asian inspired and i'm using some of my homemade beef broth i'm using some coconut aminos in place of soy sauce just because it's a little bit of a healthier option you got a little bit of brown sugar you kind of get the idea. This is very much like that typical beef stir fry that you're going to get at an Asian restaurant. I'm going to add in some of my minced ginger and minced garlic and a little bit of red pepper flake just to really pull out those fresh flavors. All right, y'all, I'm gonna show you a quick little technique. If you're having problems with cornstarch getting lumpy when you're making things like gravy or sauces, when you're trying to thicken them, a little trick that I have learned to escape the lumps <laughs> is to take a small amount of cold liquid. So you don't wanna add cornstarch directly to a hot liquid you want to be adding it to a cold liquid. So I'm just taking a little extra broth here, but you could also use cold water, depending on what type of sauce you're making thicker. And we're gonna add the cornstarch to this, and then I actually just like to throw a lid on it like this and shake it really good, and you're gonna watch that cornstarch completely dissolve, and then you can pour it into your hot liquid and you don't have to worry about it getting all lumpy and a really not desirable texture. So I just wanted to share that in case you're having this problem with cornstarch. So as you can see, I'm just mixing up that cornstarch and I'm gonna go ahead and add that right into the hot pan. This is such a game changer, especially if you are a mostly gluten-free household or you are completely gluten-free. Cornstarch is one way to thicken things without having to use flour every time. So it's something that we tend to use um, as a good gluten-free replacement to flour. So once you have your sauce and your meat all combined you're going to add the noodles back in and i noticed that my noodles kind of stuck together from sitting in the colander so i added a little extra beef broth just to loosen them up and stir it all together and my daughters raved and raved about this dish in fact we also enjoyed the leftovers as well just super super good and it would be a good remake again. <laughs> I definitely think I'm gonna keep it on my list for a good way to use ground beef. And then I topped it all off with some green onion just to give it a little pop of green. Plus, I love green onion on everything. It just has a little hint of flavor and it's just so delicious. And I also sprinkled it with some sesame seeds as well. Thank you. 
So it's actually starting to rain right now and we're on to Thursday's meal. I actually threw these chicken breasts on the grill when I had the chicken skewers done since my grill was nice and hot and ready to go. And we're going to cut these up and we're going to make a nice baked Alfredo. We'll basically get the sauce made, a really easy sauce, I can't wait to show you. And we're going to just get everything prepared so that we can throw it in the oven on Thursday night. The rain is so typical for April and May in central PA where we live and I always have to think about how much our God loves us and just sends the rain. There's been so many times in my life that I felt like it's been a dry season and so the rain when it downpours like that just reminds me of the grace and love that he has for us when he pulls us out of a dry season and sends the rain. Let me know in the comments if you can relate to that. I just think it's so beautiful. Even whenever it feels a little dreary sometimes, it's just a little reminder of how much he loves us. So here I'm just chopping up the chicken into pretty much bite-sized pieces and I'm just going to shred up my mozzarella. I just use my hand shredder, didn't get out my food processor for just one block. And we really love the grilled chicken this way. It's just, I don't know. I've made Alfredo with shredded chicken, with um, rotisserie chicken, with cubed chicken. And I just feel like nothing beats grilled chicken in your cheesy, creamy Alfredo sauce. It's just so yummy. Speaking of the sauce, so we're going to start out with some butter and garlic in the pan. And we are using some gluten-free noodles. They're brown rice and quinoa noodles. And this is one way that I have found to really make gluten-free noodles seem like regular noodles is to do baked pasta with it. Um, it just tends to hold up really well with doing it that way versus reheating something that isn't baked. I don't know if that makes sense, but I just feel like it usually reheats a lot nicer whenever it's in a baked pasta form. So once we've got that garlic butter made and don't burn your garlic, believe me, I've done it multiple times. <laughs> I'm using some gluten-free flour just to whisk into that and I did actually add a little bit of cornstarch to this. Um, I don't know if I filmed it, but I did take a little bit of cold milk and just mix up some cornstarch. I felt like the gluten-free flour wasn't quite cutting it as far as making a nice thick sauce. So just a little tip there if you're using gluten-free flour yourself. And then I used some heavy cream and a little bit of almond milk. I think the recipe called for one cup of heavy cream and two cups of regular milk. And I think I like reversed it where I did two cups of heavy cream and then one cup of almond milk just to really get it nice and creamy because I don't buy regular milk very often so I didn't really have any on hand. And then I'm gonna add in my mozzarella cheese and it also calls for parm. I had some that I had shredded myself and put into a bag in the refrigerator. So just mixing that all together and once the cheese melts, then you can add in your pasta and your chicken and just stir it all together. Now I did forget to mention that I do keep out about half of the mozzarella. You don't have to do that, but I do like to top it all off so that whenever I bake it, it's nice and bubbly and just has that good brown gooey top to it that is such a signature part of baked pasta dishes. Don't forget to oil your pan before you put everything into it. And the recipe that I will link for what I went off of for cooking this um, is a bit smaller, I believe, than the amount I made. I just kind of made extra of everything, just adding a little more cream, adding a little bit more chicken, adding a little bit more noodle to be able to make a nine by 13, but I'm not sure that the recipe would fill a nine by 13. So keep that in mind if you're hoping for that size by following this recipe. However, 
This recipe is so delicious and I love when I can find an easy, simple, delicious recipe that is a winner for my family. We so enjoyed this this week and it makes fantastic leftovers as well. So to go along with the baked Alfredo, I'm also going to make some stir fried asparagus. And this is in season right now where we live. Everybody has extra asparagus. It grows like crazy, especially if you've had a patch for quite a few years. It just seems to multiply on its own and you wanna pick it whenever it's very young and tender because they can get huge, absolutely huge. So you want them to be nice and tender, otherwise they get a little bit kind of, I don't even know, grainy, sort of like wood, <laughs> like you're biting into a tree branch or something like that if you let them get too large. So here I'm just frying up some onions to go with the asparagus and adding in a little bit of that garlic and I did kind of burn it just a tiny bit, but it's okay. We like the asparagus a little bit charred anyways, so it goes right along with the flavor that we're going to have from this. And I'm just going to stir fry this up to the point where I can throw it back in the pan when I'm ready to prepare it and I'm able to just reheat it really quickly. And so I'm also adding some more oil to make sure nothing burns. And of course, the buttery steakhouse seasoning. What would a video be without that? It's so good. And I know the next time I do a Costco run, I need to pick up some more because I use it so often. So the last meal that we're gonna prepare for Friday for this week is we are gonna be doing burgers that we'll make on that night um, with it being the last meal, I'm always very conscious of what I'm prepping to make sure that it's something that will still be good once it's sat for a couple of days. So I'm gonna be making rice that night. I thought about prepping the rice, but I felt like if it sat for a couple of days in the refrigerator, it probably wouldn't reheat very well. So I don't know, just decided to wait until that night to make it, but I wanted to make roasted veggies to go along with that. So what I'll probably do is the day before prepare the beef patties so they're ready to go on the grill and then we can throw the veggies back in the oven or in the air fryer just to get them hot and all yummy again. So I went ahead and did some yellow squash this week with some purple onion. I just think that's such a great combination. It's so delicious and I'm so excited to hopefully have some of my own squash in my patio garden this year. And then I also did some broccoli. Now broccoli done in the oven roasted like this is one of my absolute favorite things, especially with some diced onion, if you're gonna put that in there. It is just so good, and I feel like it just holds up so much better than boiling broccoli. I don't know, it's just my preference. Let me know how you like broccoli cooked. I'd love to hear it.
and I just roast all of this together around 350 degrees to 400 degrees depending on what size my pieces are and I just keep an eye on it until it looks to about the cooked tenderness <laughs> that I want from it and you guys thanks so much for watching today I hope that this video really inspired you and gave you some ideas for your meals this week let me know if you've got any great new recipes that you'd love to share in the comments below I know that this is a great resource for so many wives and moms and dads and anybody that cooks which I think is most of us most of us eat anyways right <laughs> so definitely leave comments comments below letting me and others know of some great recipes that you've been enjoying lately. Don't forget to give this video a like and I'll see you guys in my next video.